In the workshop, interesting live steam injectors from Jubilee Fittings, starting with this one which is not particularly interesting. This is one of two injectors that I removed from one of my locomotives, a 7.25 inch gauge titch, and I removed this because it had been on the engine for 24 years and was sort of full of lime scale. I bought a new pair of these injectors to replace the two on the engine, but later on I refitted this injector after boiling it in some kettle descaler and it still worked perfectly. This video is not about my experiences with injectors, but instead I'm showing some new types from Jubilee Fittings. Jubilee Fittings are a trade supplier, but you can buy them from Blackgates Engineering. This particular model of injector is made to fit on a Charles or Linda 3.5 inch gauge narrow gauge locomotive. And as you can see from this image, this particular injector uses proper flanges with small bolts. And if only I had a spanner that fitted them, it would be good. I tried quite a few spanners, but I didn't have one the right size. And the only one that fitted in the end was one of the cheap laser cut ones from the sets that I buy from Blackgates. And when I remove the last bolt, you will see that this is not just a simple flange. It has a union in the middle of the flange which is a nice touch really because if you use proper flange connections and you separate them then you have to make a new gasket or they leak. This seems to be a good idea where the flange itself just presses a normal flat face steam union onto the flange fitted to the injector body. I've mentioned in quite a few videos that the first person who showed me how to silver solder was Don English, the man who makes his injectors. And now, many years later, I can silver solder quite well, but not in the same league as this. The body of this injector looks like a casting. This is a vertical injector, but it's not a casting. It's fully built up and silver soldered. I mean, just look at it. It's ridiculous. How does he do this? These injectors are beautiful pieces of model engineering. Very small, and they work. The following section of the video is from a previous video that I made all about injectors. So let's have a look at it. It consists of two cones. There are more inside but two that you can actually pull out and handle. One is the steam cone and the other one is the delivery cone. And what happens when a jet of steam is passed through these cones, it is speeded up. And then it meets the cold water. And obviously the steam condenses in the water then this mixture of steam and water finds itself in a combining cone, which is right in the middle. You can see it here. It's a very small but very important part of an injector. The combination of these cones and the water accelerates the steam and water mixture sufficiently to lift the clack valve and allow water into the boiler. But it's still witchcraft. And in this image you can just about see the internal cones. There's obviously a hole through the middle of these cones, and there's also a ball valve which sits in the middle. So in this clip it's time to test the injector, and here's how you do it. First of all, the injector needs to be cool. Steam cannot condense in the water if the water is really hot. And because the injector is connected to the live steam pipe at one end, it's going to get very hot, because the short piece of copper pipe that connects the injector to the turret conducts heat very well. So I open the water valve, let the water run for a while, then open the steam valve, and then start to back off the water, start to close the water valve, and then it makes a wonderful slurping noise, which means that the injector is pumping water into the boiler, and this wonderful slurping noise is accompanied by nothing dripping from the overflow. Occasionally you will get a drip of water from the overflow, but most of it is going into the boiler. Look at this one. This is Don's latest offering and a slight modification. The flanges are now union nuts. And when this is all painted and underneath the engine, you will not notice the hexagon. It's a fine line between it being ugly and practical. Once again, look at the quality of the silver soldering. It really does look like a casting. I'm going to fit one of these to my Castle Steam V6 boiler, as well as using the horizontal steam power pump. In this clip you could see how quick it would be to remove the injector from an installation. These are just like standard union nuts with a flange on the end. I'm going to thread the holes to take some 10BA hexagon bolts. The left blank so that the user can decide what kind of bolts that they need. 
relative to the scale of the engine that the injectors are fitted to. Once again, in this clip you can see that all they are are standard, flat-ended steam unions, making it very painless and very quick to remove and refit the injector from the installation. I think this is a really good compromise between practicality and scale appearance. I once watched John Holroyd at the steam workshop dismantling the water system from a 5 inch gauge 9F steam locomotive and it took him a long time. Every one of the flanges were bolted together. I really do admire the skill and patience of John Holroyd, but I prefer a much quicker method. This is definitely the most popular type of injector and they just use union nuts on each end and on the water feed as well. Here are a pair of vertical injectors and you can see the difference in size between the small one and these. This next part is taken from a video I made about testing my 7.25 inch gauge tits before running it round the track. As you can see the engine is fitted with a pair of injectors. The black injector works fine and it sounds beautiful. The red injector has always been problematic and I don't think it's the injector at all. I'd just like to say there was nothing wrong with the red injector, it was just some very bad plumbing where I got some silver soldered down one end of a pipe where it shouldn't be. A while back I made a video all about working on a Chinese 14XX steam locomotive and here's a short extract showing one of the injectors. There's not really enough pressure at £25 per square inch to make the injector work, but I'll give it a go anyway just to see what happens. So I turn the water on first which cools the injector down and as I open the steam valve the water from the overflow speeds up and then all of a sudden to my surprise it stops. Which means that the injector is feeding the water into the boiler and to be perfectly honest I didn't think this would be the case. Although it's not perfect it's still a little bit dribbly I can clearly see the water level climbing up the gauge glass. This was the level of water showing in the gauge glass before I used the injector and the reason that the injector just knocked off with a big cloud of steam is because the water went right to the top and if you get water coming down the steam line to the injector the injector will not work at all. But by now we have a bit of pressure it's going up towards 40 pounds per square inch. Time to test the injector water valve on, let the water run, open the steam valve and the injector injects, it immediately dries up and it's pumping water into the boiler. Sometimes you get it right the first time, you open the water valve and then open the steam valve and it injects. Other times the water continues to run and you just have to back off the water a little bit. Then it picks up and makes that lovely sound as the water is being pumped into the boiler. And that's about it. Different injectors for different projects. All made by Jubilee Fittings and available from Blackgates Engineering. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.